Right, today I'm doing um, a drippy slippy mug and I am doing it with slip with cobalt sprinkles in. So I posted a video probably a week or two ago. I don't know if you can see it particularly well in the video, but I'll post the still images. But uh, this was a drippy slippy piece with cobalt sprinkles in the slip and then this is using it like grog in throne clay both of which have worked really well um just to recap for anyone who hasn't seen either well seen that video um it's basically a glaze that i've crushed up and bisque fired which has sintered it so it's not melted but it's not uh, soluble anymore. Adding water to it doesn't turn it back into um, liquid glaze. And I've used the process, in fact, the example piece here. So this is my Valentine's special for this year. It's pink with white and darker reddish pink speckles. Um, and I've done it before with white glaze with blue sprinkles. Um, but basically I was wondering if you could add it to slip or clay and fire it successfully and the answer is that you can. Um, I have tried it before with uh, clay sprinkles. So I stained clay with stains or coloured clay with stains rather and then um, added them to slip and that doesn't work. The reason for that's very simple, that the slip covers the stains and it doesn't bleed through at all. So I think the reason this worked where previous ones haven't is because it's cobalt and the cobalt is capable of bleeding through the clay slightly. It's a bit more potent. And if that's the case, then I expect this technique will work with um, copper, cobalt, manganese and iron and probably not a lot else because you need something with that kind of potent ability to, to seep its way through the clay because it will get a thin coating. So um, if anyone hasn't seen my drippy slippy technique before, um, I get a laser shining across the centre of the wheel which gives me a vertical line on the piece. I have handles, I extrude them, they're, I made them earlier so they're dry, I kind of match the dryness of the piece. I throw the piece the day before, let it dry on the bat and you can do a quick trim, quick trim of the outside um, and burnish it because you can't trim where the slip is going to go and then what I have is a syringe with two colours of slip marbled in it. I've got cobalt blue and then porcelain white with the cobalt sprinkles. So it should look very much like that. The only difference is that the base clay on this is white whereas here I use dark clay with the white over the top. It won't make any difference to the slip application, but we'll change the colour underneath. Um, so yeah, piece is all but ready, and then what you do is it's worth spending a bit of time trying to make sure you don't have any air bubbles in the slip. I'm hoping I've managed that this time, as they work their way out when you apply it. And then what I'm looking for is a slightly random um, kind of thickness of the application because if it's completely even all the way around it'll just all slide down uniformly keeping a bit in the syringe to add to the handle side and then take it off tap it on the wheel head until it moves a bit. So there we have a nice amount of movement. 
see you get because I pulsed the thickness of the application uh, where it's thicker it moves more so you get that kind of random slip and if you didn't do that you'd learn it this I can show you particularly but it would all move down at the same rate so you just end up with the same kind of pattern that you started with and you can sort of see the darker bits on top so there should be a nice bit of marbling in which I did get in this one where you can sort of see the, um, the darker fading to white each time. You won't necessarily do that every time, that's the joy of marbling it in the syringe. Uh, if you want to completely avoid that you can put them in separate syringes for separate colours and then you control the application more. But um, I like the randomness of it. Make sure that each one, each one will be different anyway but even more unique. And then a little bit of slip on the handle, supporting it from inside, pick a bit, I try and pick a bit like that where there's a deep dip at the bottom. So the, you've definitely got slip all the way down the handle. And then what you want to do is support inside at the top, you'll obscure the laser as you stick it. So it's worth kind of making a mental note of where you're applying it. And then I stick the top firmly. Make sure the laser is centered on the handle. And then keeping it lined up, bend it down to it touches, and then compress the joint well. You don't need to score and slip to make things stick. This is plenty. You actually don't need to score anyway. Slip will stick things on their own so long as the things are the right level of dryness. So you want them to be matched and you don't want them to be too dry. If they're soft they'll stick anyway, but if they're too dry or mismatched then you'll have issues. And the reason for picking a bit where the slip went quite low is because that handle is in the slip rather than past the bottom of it. Just makes sure it needs to join. And then what I'll do is wire off at this point and I will set it to dry but I will set something butting up against the handle just to make sure because the slip will have added moisture back to the clay it's going to rehydrate it, soften it back up um, so you don't want the handle starting to pull the whole mug over which it could do otherwise so I will just get something like that and sit it on the side with that butted up to it um, so it can't kind of slump over time uh, and that is it. This is going to be, I think I'm going to do this as a limited edition winter snowflake version of the glaze. So this will be the example piece and I'll get them up for, separated that very well, uh, I'll get them up for orders over the next week or two. Um, I'm really pleased with how well it's working and yeah, I'll stick in the pictures of that because I don't know how well you've been able to see the speckled detail of it in this video. But um, if you want to try it, I will post the links to the previous videos, um, one of which... So the speckles in this are just adding 2% cobalt to the recipe that I used in the video on when I did it as the glaze. And I haven't got the example piece I show in there but it's the same recipe I use for this one. Um, I formulated the recipe for a cone 06 bisque so I can put my glaze in. What I do is I dry it out like that, just pour a glaze in, dry it out, then I'll crush this up, put it through a sieve and put it in a bisque with regular stuff. If you bisque to a different temperature you'll have to adjust the recipe to accommodate that because the amount of boron in the glaze determines and the source of the boron in the glaze determines how it will melt in a bisque firing and each glaze will behave differently. So if you want to experiment with this process, the simplest way is to chuck some glaze in a bisque, but if it melts too much, it'll fuse to whatever you put it in. So it's worth being able to adjust the chemistry of it 
And if you can't do that, you need to be able to adjust the temperature that you fire it to. So you might, if you are, only have cone six glazes and you can't adjust the recipes, if you can do a lower temperature firing, you can probably achieve the same result. Uh, it might be something more like 850, 900C rather than 1000. Um, most cone six glazes will melt too much at 1000C to sinter without fusing. And once they start fusing together, you can't break them up to be the sprinkles. So it's a balancing act. Um, at some point, I'll do a full write up on this. But really, if you want to kind of understand the chemistry side of it, take a ceramic tutorials workshop class. I'll post a link to them below because that's where I learned it all. And they really are good. Um, but failing that, the recipes that I use um, I'll post. If you do a hotter temperature and you can't be bothered to learn about the chemistry and just want an easy way to do it, um, what I've done before when I used a cone 04 bisque, which is 1050C, um, I used 4321. So search on Glazy for Leach 4321. It's a recipe that's 40%. I want to say. 40% feldspar, 30% silica, 20% whiting, 10% uh, kaolin. But it might be some of those flipped. But it's just a recipe with 40, 30, 20, 10% stuff. That centers nicely in a cone 04 with cobalt. That's what I used before. Um, so you can do it that way if you bisque slightly hotter. And... Um, I think that's about it really it's just it's a very simple process i'll link to all the, the things where i've posted about it more um if you want to try it it's quite straightforward and it just requires figuring out which glazes will sinter correctly at your, in your bisque and that's once you've done that once you've got a base recipe and again 4321 if you're using 04 bisque um my recipe if you're using 06 bisque uh, and then you can start. Mine was designed for using stains and zerka packs, um, which is what I'm using for that. That's covered with stains, although it is capable of doing chrome tin. Um, and yeah, then you can start colouring with stains, won't flux it, some oxides will. So if you put loads of um, cobalt in, for example, you will find that it starts to melt more. So that is again part of the balancing act, why it's worth learning the chemistry so that once that starts happening, you know what to do to keep the glaze working, but with the new conditions. Um, any questions, ask them below, I'll try and help, but uh, ideally go and check out the other stuff I've posted about it first, because I hopefully have answered everything in this video and in those videos. But uh, if there's anything I've missed, let me know.